Well, hello, champs and chappets, and welcome to this special Kickstarter video for the game Chartered the Golden Age. And um, if this looks familiar to you, it might be because, yes, I've already done a video for a previous version of the game, but this is the new version of the game with a few tweaks and twists and new little rules. So, everything you're going to see in this video is of this version of the game and it's a prototype so please bear that in mind that this is not the final version and not a representation of the actual finished thing that you're going to get when you back this game. So, uh, if you want to jump along to the Kickstarter, there's a link up on the screen right now and there'll be a link at the end of this video and there'll be a link in the show notes below. So without further ado, I will take you to the table and show you how to play this new version of Chartered the Golden Age. Chartered. Players are merchants bringing goods into the ports of Amsterdam. You're going to be creating enterprises and businesses. You're going to be selling and buying stocks in different trades. And at the end of the game, once you've sold all your stocks, it's the player that has made the most money that is deemed the winner. Now, the setup of the game will vary depending on the number of players. But basically, the setup is this. In the middle of the table, you'll place the main board, either on its harbour side for smaller groups of players or on its city centre side for larger groups. Next to this, you'll place the stock chart, which will keep track of the value of each of the different stocks. Next to that, you'll create the nine different types of stocks, placing out the cards in individual piles along with their token and their main warehouse. You'll take the building cards and you may have to remove some depending on the number of players. You'll give these a shuffle and you'll deal out an amount of cards to each player. This deck of cards is made up of building cards and level cards. If your starting hand contains three or more level cards, you'll need to hand this in and be dealt a new hand. All cards handed in will be shuffled into the main deck. From the main deck, you'll create an open market. Again, the number of cards in the open market will depend on the number of players. There is also an event deck. This deck of cards will create events which will happen throughout the game. You can, if you wish, choose to shuffle these in to your building card deck. Each player will choose a color and take the two flags of that color. And each player will receive money from the bank depending again on the number of players. Finally, on the side, you're gonna need to place all the warehouses or maybe not all the warehouses, again, depending on the number of players. You choose a starting player, and now you're ready to start making a profit. So starting with the start player, that player will perform one of two actions, and then play will pass to the player on the left, and they will do the same until the game ends. Now, the two actions that a player can choose from is one, they could buy one of the land cards, or two, they can build a warehouse onto the board. If you buy a land card, you'll play 50 gilded to the bank, and you'll be able to take one of either the face up cards or the face down card from the top of the deck. This card goes into your hand and your hand has no size limit. The thing you have to be aware of though is at the end of the game for each card that you still have in your hand, you're gonna be penalized by 20 gilder per card. If a face up card was taken, you replace it immediately. If this new replaced card is an event card, you read the text and perform the action marked. You'll do the same if a player decides to buy from the deck and that top card is an event card. 
Some event cards will give you money, some event cards will make you lose money, and some of the cards will adjust the stock values on the stock chart. The second action you can do is build a warehouse. Now, all you have to do to do this is play a card from your hand. This could be a level card, or it could be a numbered plot card. When you play this card, you'll either be creating a new enterprise, or expanding an enterprise, or merging some enterprises. The creation of an enterprise happens when a player plays a build card and that build card allows them to place a factory on that space but it's not touching another factory. But also that factory needs to be three spaces away from an existing enterprise. So in this case the 57 card would not be sufficeable whereas a 58 card would be better. The player would then choose one of the headquarter enterprises from the ones that are remaining and then place the headquarters of that enterprise on top of that warehouse. They then also receive two other warehouses which they can place either side of their headquarters. In this case, this would be illegal because there is now only a distance of two spaces between the two existing enterprises. So this warehouse would have to go here they take the stock token of that enterprise and add it to the stock chart on the 30 guilders mark and you get to collect the value of that enterprise so in this case 30 guilders from the bank and they also receive a free stock card which they can put in their hand or place in front of them the second way a build action works is by expanding so if a player played this 57 card that means that they can place a warehouse on the 57 space this is touching the silver enterprise, which means that the silver enterprise expands by one. You'll increase the stock value of silver by one, taking it to 40 guilders, meaning that you will then collect 40 guilders from the bank. Another way to expand an enterprise is to play a level card instead. This is a second level, which means that you get to add a warehouse on a second level on any of the warehouses that you wish. So let's place this one here. And adding a second level will increase the value of that enterprise by two, meaning that you'd collect 60 guilders. If you were to play a higher level, you need to make sure that there is a lower level below it. So in this case, for a third level, I need to place it on top of a second level. And for each level, it's another number. So for the third level, it would be increased by three, four for fourth level and five for a fifth level. Another way an enterprise can go up in a level is if a player plays a numbered card and it happens to be on the space where there is already a warehouse. In this case, this would happen if, when you remember, this silver enterprise was created, we had two free warehouses and we placed them here and here. So this is just a case of the 59 and that going on top and on the stock chart the silver will be affected differently because it was not a level card it was a build card it only ever goes up one space and not to forget our player needs to pick up 100 gilder as well so the third thing a build action can do is cause a merger between two or three enterprises this player plays a 56 which places this warehouse in the middle connecting the T and the silver enterprises the player that took the build action will add 10 guilders to the enterprise of their choice, so either the T or the silver, so in this case, the silver. The smaller of the two companies, in this case T, would be liquidated and all players would have to sell their stocks of T. And they sell them for the stock value, so 40 guilders a piece for two would give you 80 guilders. And if you were the owner of that enterprise because you had your flag in its warehouse, that means that you get four times the value for each stock card that you have. All the stock cards would return to their deck and then the value of the smaller company will be added to the larger company. One, two, three, four, 140 guilders for silver. And then the T is removed. You place the stock token back. You also remove the T headquarters and you return that as well. And hopefully someone might create another new enterprise and it'll be tea again. And we all love a cup of tea, don't we? If a player builds a warehouse and in the unusual circumstance, it will connect three enterprises together. That player will then get to choose two of those warehouses and do a merger liquidation like normal. And then they will do the remaining two. So again, there will be only one 
enterprise to rule them all and bind them into the darkness. After a player has done a build action, they will have a supplementary action. They can either buy or sell up to two stock of their choice, or they can become an owner of an enterprise. If you buy or sell stock, the stock needs to be of a value of 50 guilders or more, and the price that you buy and sell it is marked on the stock chart. If you decide to buy out an enterprise, your first enterprise that you buy will cost you 200 guilder. You'll place your flag in that enterprise and now any stock that you have of that type is now worth four times its value. You can do it a second time uh, with your second flag, but this time it'll cost you 400 guilders, but your stock will still be four times that value. If you have lots of opium, you're gonna get lots of money if you're the owner of it. The other thing is you can't sell this stock now. This stock has to stay in your hand until either a company is liquidated by a merger or at the end of the game. And that's when you get your Christmas bonus. If on your turn, you cannot perform either of these two actions, you cannot build a warehouse because none of the cards will either let you build a new enterprise or not expand an enterprise. And you also can't buy a new building card because you have no money, you're gonna be obliged to sell some of your stock. You'll sell stock just enough to give you money so you can buy a new building card and you add that to your hand. That is the only action that you can do. If the draw deck for the building cards runs out, you don't replace it, that is it. There are no more cards to be drawn or to be bought. The game will then end when the last warehouse is placed onto the board. Once this is done, the game ends immediately. Players will then take all their stock cards and sell them all at their stock value. Remember, if you have flag stock, this is four times the value of what it is on the stock chart. If you have any building cards left in your hand, you're gonna lose 20 guilder for each. Then you total up your money and this is your score and the player with the most is the winner. And there you go, that is how you play Chartered the Golden Age. Oh look, I've got two heads. <laughs> um, if you want to go and check this game out, it's on Kickstarter. There's a link in the end credits as they scroll up at the end of this video and also in the show notes below in this video. And uh, there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has been informative for you and pointed you in the direction whether this is a Kickstarter for you or not. And uh, I will say ciao for now. And remember, if you like this video and you found it great and informative, give it a like. If you know someone that might appreciate this game, share this video with them. And if you want to check out everything else that I've been getting up to in the board gaming world, music, videos and reviews and blogs, you can go to boardgameseverybodyshould.com and check out everything there. So ciao for now and remember to please play nicely with each other because, 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 because the wonderful, wonderful things that it does. Just sitting at the